G'day lads and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to be painting up a 3D rendered model to look like a full finished promotional image painting. Now this is a, a, a shot taken from a set that Tidal Craftsman and I have worked on for Dota 2 for Batrider. This is the Batrider character and uh, this is the set. So he's a bit of an adventurer, field worker kind of character <clears throat> and I'm going to be making a promotional image. Now it's different because it's not like a normal speed painting where I create something from scratch. I have this to work with. I have a, a pretty finished looking image, but how do we take a 3D looking model that looks quite blocky and you know quite unrefined, how do we refine that up and make it look ready uh, as if it's like, you know, in context and, and you know, almost cinema, almost a bit more cinematic like in its quality. That's what we're going to be going through and doing today. So before I get to adding a background and adding a lot more of the cinematic feel that I'm going for, I've got to take this very blocky looking character and refine it and make it look a bit more painted, look a little bit more... Uh, you know, solid and, and smooth rather than jagged and blocky from the low res geometry that we've worked with. And so I'm going to hide my reference layers here and I'm going to duplicate my base layer. This one here, this character. Uh, reason being is you always, always, always want a backup. <laughs> uh, and usually when I hit a certain milestone, like let's say when I finish doing the editing of, certain, of a certain thing, um, I will back it up again, just so that I have kind of stages as you go along. So it's like, it's the equivalent of saving, but with landmarks. So if you ever need to go back to a certain point, it's there. So make sure you do that. So I've got my duplicate image here, and this is the one I'm going to be editing. And the first thing I'm going to be doing is removing the blocky feel. Now I'm going to be doing this first of all by using the liquify tool. And then after that, I'm going to be doing a little bit more manual painting. So the liquify tool can be found here in Photoshop up under filter, liquify. And we open up this box here. So the liquify tool enables me to zoom in and smudge things around a bit. So if I zoom in here, let's go to actual pixels view. Now if I select my brush, you can see that I can smudge it all around without uh, disturbing and, and uh, softening the pixels too much. It still does do that, so if you, if you do it quite a bit, let's say if I bring the ear out, then I bring it all the way back in, it does soften it as if I'd blurred it. Um, so, you know, don't overdo it because you do need to be able to go back. That aside, that is what the liquify tool is. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going around this image and I'm going to be finding areas where it's very blocky and I'm going to round it out a bit. Now there are two ways I'm going to be doing this. The first is by using this normal brush tool here, the forward warp tool. And so I'll set the brush to, let's say 50, pressure to 50. Uh, I'll bring the brush size up, maybe 80. And you can see here where it's all blocky, I can just kind of pull bits in and out like this. So I see how I've already rounded out that shoulder. So I'll do the same here with the tricep. Do the same here with the forearm. I'm just kind of tweaking things so that it's not so blocky. Now, less is more. You don't want to overdo it because if you overdo it, it will end up looking very photoshopped. And so the goal here is to make things look much more even and much more smooth. So that's the first tool I'm going to be using in Liquify. The other tool I'm going to be using is this one here, the bloat tool. So if I click on here, I'll bring the size up to 120. When I click using the bloat tool, you can see now I'm not going to use it like this, I'm just showing you what it does. That it pushes things out like that. Okay, so I'll undo that. I'm going to set the brush size up to 140 and I'm going to use the bloat tool on bits of the arm, like the shoulder, just very slightly. On the bicep. And you can see how that rounds out the middle area. So this forward warp tool is good for edges, for the edges, when things are too blocky, and then the uh, the bloat tool is good for the inside bits that look a bit too blocky as well. So I'm going to go through and do this image, and I will fast forward through the process so you don't get too bored, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, so I finished using the liquify tool and I'm gonna go through here and show you the individual areas, the before and after. So the overall, this is the after and this is before. So you can see as I change between those, the change is quite drastic. I really did go through and soften all of the hard edges, both inside and out of the image. Now, there are some areas that uh, can't be completely fixed with a liquid fire tool, and we're gonna go through those and fix them in a moment, but I'm gonna go through individually and just show you the major changes. So let's start with the, whoops, upper body. So before, you can see that the hat is quite blocky, so I used the liquify tool to add a bit of shape to the hat as well. I'll just uh, get a brush tool so I can show you what I'm talking about. So yes, you can see that I've kind of brought the shape up like that and uh, added a bit of curvature to the top of the hat. Going down here, you can see that in the arm, I've rounded the arm to fit the actual muscles a bit better. So the shoulder, the tricep and the bicep and having that smoothly flow into the forearm. And you can see the forearm's quite a drastic difference here. We've got um, a very blocky original feel. And so I've rounded that out and then also made sure that the inside was smooth as well. Because in the original one, it's very blocky. The thumb, is very blocky right here it's very square whereas in the after you can see that it's all been much more smoothed out so that's that area we have up here similar sort of thing working with shoulder tricep and bicep so you can see before there there really isn't any, even any muscle at all it doesn't pop out in the right places but that's because we're working with the low resolution mesh same with the forearm made sure to add the elbow and the other lines made sure to have the cloth on the inside flow with the curvature of the body. Now, the middle of the torso is meant to be quite blocky, so there really isn't much that I changed about it. I mean, the, the piece itself is, is meant to look blocky, so I didn't mess with that pretty much at all. So coming down here, we've got the legs. This was fairly drastic, uh, but the major shape definitions have stayed pretty much the same so you can see how the blocky thing when smooth still followed the same shape it just flowed a bit more I kind of popped out the middle with the uh, blow up tool thing I forget what that one was called and then same thing with the leg and then the bat is a tricky one too because uh, the bat is even larger so it's even more noticeable so I'll zoom a bit to show you the bat so you can see, particularly in this back wing area, really pushed this in here and really smoothed out the edges. So you can see how much of a difference that is. Same with this area in here, really popped that in. The face is another one. Lots of small refinements like uh, the fangs, uh, the, the ridge up here has been smoothed out, the ears have been smoothed out and then in particular, this is a very noticeable jagged edge that has been turned into a smooth sort of upper chest area for the bat. And then moving along up to this wing. Now, this area is quite blocky anyway, so there's not much I could do about the middle texture in here. Um, so what I've done is I've made sure to have a refined smooth edge along there, and then I'm going to go through and manually fix up a bit of that. Otherwise, that's pretty much all of it. Oh, and finally, we have the cape, which has kind of two edges, which has been smoothed out into a flowing cape. So they are all of the changes. And as you can see, there's quite a bit that's been messed around with. <clears throat> and we've got what we're ready to start painting on. So I'm going to back this up. So I'm gonna call the very first one raw, and that's hidden, and I'm gonna call this warped and I'm going to duplicate warped and call this layer painted and I'm going to start painting so when I um, use the liquify there's only so much that it can fix it can't solve all the problems for example up here in this shoulder area the lighting the colors don't match 
how I want it to look. Um, so for example, the, um, the color here is very dark and it makes it look like it's shaded. Like if light was here, it makes this look like this isn't round. It makes it look like it's got a bump in there. So I'm going to manually paint in there. Uh, and there are some other things. So I'm going to be doing two major things as I go through in this next step. I'm going to, going to be manually painting and I'm going to be blurring. Okay, so I'll show you first the manually painting thing. First things first, I'm going to create a clipping mask by alt clicking the line on a new layer on top of this painted layer. That way, whenever I scribble and do all my painting, it doesn't mess up the shape that I've created on that character. It just paints inside that area. So I'm going to find a brush that I like and I want to find a bit of a textured one uh, that isn't too smooth to kind of fit a bit of a painted look. So I like, the, where is it? Let me find you, there you are. I quite like this one. Okay, so the painting process, and this is a bit of a trick shown to me by Danny Dem, who's quite a well-known uh, creator of workshop items on the Steam Workshop, is with a brush selected, holding Alt, you can find, you can use your, um, that Alt is your shortcut for the, what do you call it? The, um, there's a name for this thing, the eyedropper, whatever it is. And you can see how if I click and drag, I can see where the color is being selected. So I'll find the color I want selected and I'm painting over it. And I want to alt click again, a medium sort of color. I'll bring the brush size up a bit. And so basically, alt clicking, I'm reselecting paint as I go constantly to fit where I'm painting to get a bit of a painted look. Softer strokes, create softer tones. Now it looks quite rough at the moment, but that's because it is rough at the moment. And now I hit my shortcut is R to get my blur tool. And then I simply blur this into itself. Now the good thing about this is I can make it visible and invisible because it's on a clipping mask, it isn't on the main painted layer. So make sure that uh, you don't, uh, you don't remove, you, sorry, you don't paint directly onto the layer that you're working on, this base image, I mean. Otherwise, you might make a mistake and you might not be able to reverse it. Whereas in this case, if I don't like what I did, I can simply erase what I did. But you can see how very quickly, oops, I'll zoom out. You can see how very quickly I've made that shoulder a lot more rounded. And so I'll smooth it into shape. Make it all kind of flow together a bit more. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm just gonna undo a few times. There we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll do a little bit more on here. A little bit more of this golden color and then blur it in. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So you can see how much of a drastic difference that that makes. So I'm gonna go through this whole image and do that. I'm gonna do my painting and I'm gonna do, gonna do my blurring and I'm gonna speed up the process. Otherwise you will get very, very bored very quickly.
Now I've finished doing my overlay painting and the first thing I do when I finish something is right click duplicate layers and I have a backup. Now I'm going to merge these into one so that it's all one flat image now except for my backup because if I ever need to change anything my backup has the info and layers so I can go through and do that. And uh, I just want to compare this to our original so you can see how drastic it is. So if I hide this you can see very quickly how different it is. The most obvious one uh, part uh, that is most different I would say is the wing here. So you can say, see when I show I've pretty much completely repainted that area just because it deformed in a weird sort of way and uh, didn't ha doesn't have as enough sort of texture resolution and polygons to make it look very good. So you can see also on the back wing, everything's kind of started to come looking quite good. The mouth is another area where I've kind of repainted over a lot of things. Now I don't want to add too much or remove too much because at the end of the day we are representing a model that is a way it is, you know, so I can't do something too different as the representative sort of piece for that set, otherwise it will end up misrepresenting it. But you can see very quickly how we've changed that. So I'm very happy with the result here. And now I'm ready to add the refinements and make it really look like a piece of promotional material. Now, this as is, is probably the hardest part uh, in terms of changing it from the polygonal low resolution looking image to something that looks a lot sharper and uh, quite nice as if it was, you know, taken a, from a high resolution image and you know, or even pa partially custom painted. So what I'm going to do now is set up the basic background gradient so I know what the lighting will look like and then I'm going to start adding lighting to the character and then I'm going to muck around with the actual background. So I'm going to create a new folder called background and I'm going to mess around with this. So in the background I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to add a gradient and it's going to be from very, very, very dark desaturated blue to a really, really dark saturated orange. And, and just that to that. So I want it to look a little like, okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, so I think I'll even darken this desaturated blue even more. Uh, maybe not. Kind of liked it was and I think that's good enough in fact that's quite good okay so for the base that's what I want and now I'm gonna just do some really really rough fill in sort of flames so to do this I'm gonna get my yellow first things first I want to get a reference image so I will bring up a browser and I'm gonna go to Google and I'm going to look up Flames. Oops, I didn't look up. Flames. Okay. So what I'm looking at is how the colors uh, distribute over a dark background. So these are good references. So I can see that they're fairly strong shape. Now I'm not going to paint the refined final image and I will use photo overlays as well, but I want it to look partially painted. So the center of the flames uh, kind of gets lighter towards the center, but it's more light and yellow and then on the edges it's darker and orange so that's what i kind of wanted to look at so now with that in mind i'm going to get a dark sort of orange and we paint from dark to light so I'll up my brush size quite a bit and i'm just going to scribble in some basic flames some licks. It's really, really scribbly. And the thing I keep in mind when I'm doing organic substances like flame, water, things like cloth, is to be really about instinct. You learn it over time, but if you spend too much time and you really try and refine it too much, you can really end up ruining it and overdoing it and making it look less organic. So 
I prefer to be really kind of messy at first, especially with something like flames, and add refinement later. So I'm getting lighter here. I'm going to bring my brush size down a bit. The main point of this is to really get an idea as to how the piece is going to be composed in the end. And we do that by doing a rough background first before we get even near doing the full background. So that when we do the lighting on the character, it fits what the background will become. So I'm not going to refine the background to its final state now, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that'll do. Now I'm going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to just mush that all up to something like that. Hit OK. I'll see what it looks like with the glow. So outer glow, make it quite a large sort of glow and make it a orange glow. So I think that works well. And adds to that fiery feel that we're looking for. Okay. Yes, I prefer it with the glow. <clears throat> okay, so that is my rough background. Now, I didn't want more than that. And I'm quite happy with that as is. I'm going to see what it looks like. See, and, and in this stage of the image, this is one of my favorite parts of creating an image uh, is towards the end where you start doing the final lighting and final composition because it, it, it's both quite difficult in that it's very improvised. You don't ever really know how to go about it or how it's going to be completely finished. You have instincts and you follow them. Some things work, some things don't, but it's really a trial and error muck around sort of process. And I really love it because uh, as you become more familiar with that sort of process, it becomes really quite fun. So I'm going to add a backlight here, Ooh, very light bluey purple like this and I'm going to bring it down to make it barely visible just so that you can see how it kind of makes him pop a little bit I want to make him pop a little bit okay so I'm pretty happy with that okay so I've got my basic fake background done. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some fake lighting. Now I've got my basic lighting here from the 3D render. Now there were three lights in the render and I'll just sketch them out for you so you know what I mean. In the 3D render what I did was I had a fairly strong, and I'm going to hide the background for this so you can see what I'm doing. I had a fairly strong rich orange light behind him towards the back like that so you can see how it does sort of reflect on his skin in certain areas so it's kind of gotten a start on that I had a light blue further behind on the back so you can see how there's kind of that light blue look on the other side of the edges and then the main ambient light was just a very very almost white light but I can't really do that because you can't see it very much. And it was in front of the character around here. So that is how my 3D lighting was set up. So my job now is to complement that with some artificial highlights. So making my background visible, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to create a clipping mask with a new layer on this character so that I can paint in there. And I'm going to create those light refractions on the skin and on the character and on the bat artificially as well to kind of enhance that to make it look really sort of intense. So to do that, I'm going to select my default Photoshop brush because it's much more sort of uh, smooth and artificial looking. I'm going to go through and I'm going to just paint uh, with the opacity down. I'm going to paint over some areas 
in that direction, just very roughly, because this is just to get a, an idea. And I'm going to select through my blend modes to find one that works well. So what works well? That's not bad. Color dodge. Also, we've got overlay. Overlay is quite good. Let's go overlay. And I'm going to lighten it a little bit because I think that'll make it stand out even more. Yeah, it does. It makes it pop. Okay. So now that I've got that ready, I'm going to name this layer Orange Backlight. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go through and create that. So I'm going to add this to my color palette by putting it in there in the swatches. And the next thing I'm going to do is set up the other lights. And I'm going to just do them all in one hit. So the next one is the blue backlight. So I'm going to select a light blue. Do a similar thing. Go through the areas that are going to have that blue fraction on the skin and go through the blend modes and see which one fits well. Now I don't want it to be too strong or too, too imposing. What's that? Overlay is not bad again, but it kind of make things, makes things look too green. And I don't want it to look too cold. I kind of want it to be a lot less intense than the uh, orange one. So I'm going to make it almost white. And let's do this again. go through the blend modes again. Pretty happy with that one. No, it's not quite strong enough. It's darkened. What else have we got? Color burn. No. So I think overlay will do it. I'm going to put that color in the swatches so that I can just select them. So I have that layer ready. And then our final layer, which is the ambient light. Put that in the clipping mask. And I'm going to select my neutral color. I'm just going to paint on the front sections like this. Again, these are all tests. And I'm going to go through these and find one that helps enhance the darks and lights and doesn't add too much to the um, lighting because it's ambient. I want it to be fairly soft. What's this divide? That's not bad. I'm going to use divide. That seems to be working well. Okay. Hmm. Maybe it's. Yeah, see that? That's quite strange. Maybe I shouldn't use that one. Should I use overlay though? Because it would end up looking too much the same. I think I will use overlay. Okay. So I think they all, <laughs> they do. They all use overlay. Overlay is a pretty safe bet. So now that I've got my layer set up, I'm going to fast forward through the process so you don't get bored. And you will see me paint through one by one. I'm going to first paint the orange backlight, then the blue backlight, and then the ambient neutral tone on the front.
Okay, so I've done my basic lighting overlays here, the artificial added ones, and you can see that when I remove them, bam, we've got a much flatter image. And then when I make them visible, bam, it really just puts it in the context, especially with that fake background filler that I've put in there and this orange highlight. Um, with that not there, it kind of looks out of place, but then with it all kind of put together, it really just fits in that atmosphere. Fits in that atmosphere. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some rim lighting and this will again be artificial and I'm just going to go around the edges and add a clipping mask. I'll call this rim lighting and I'm going to be adding that manually by creating a white hard light around edges kind of like that. Now I'll go through manually and do that and I'm going to be doing that in a way that it also makes things pop out in a 3D way like the hair and things like that. And then after that I'll add a little bit of extra yellowy glowy stuff on top. So I'm going to go around here and I'll just do a small section so you can see what I mean and then I'll fast forward through the process. So I get my brush, bring the opacity to something like 70, maybe 50 because I've got to be able to layer it and I'm really just doing the edges just the very very edges and this will in theory make it all pop out quite a lot and so remember when you do rim lighting to really follow the shape of things so for example here we've got cloth that um, has different shapes within itself. So you kind of want to make sure that the rim lighting complements that. So for example, kind of have it work in the shape like that. Even if very subtly, it helps give it a bit more dimension. And don't be subtle where, don't be afraid to even in areas of pitch blackness to add it and make it quite strong because it will complement the final piece and help it stand out. So you can see if I zoom out, you can see already when I hide and show the rim light, it really just makes that pop. So in combination with the other light, so if I hide it all, it's really flat. And then when I bring in all my artificial light layers, it really pops. So that rim lighting does quite a lot. I'm going to fast forward through the process because it does take a bit of time, but you will see as it unfolds how much it really brings the image out.
Okay, so I've finished my rim lighting and as you can see, it's really coming along here. So let me just show you making that invisible. You can see how much that really just makes the whole thing pop, which is really cool. And it works really well with the, um, the lighting I've placed down. So if I hide it all, you can see how flat that looks. And then with all my new artificial layers of lighting, bam, all of a sudden the whole thing just jumps out. So I'm going to do <clears throat> one more thing to do with lighting. Um, orange glow. And I'm not going to do this as an, uh, a clipping mask because I want this to have a little bit of glow on the whole thing overall. So I'm going to find a way just to make that pop a little bit. So I'm going to try an orange, really light orange like this. And I'm just going to paint over the edges of where I've done some of the rim lighting and go through my overlays. I want to find one that gets a bit of a glow. Okay, so screen looks like it will be the one to do. Hmm. Although vivid light looks pretty good. Let's go back to screen. Maybe a mixture of both. We'll see. But for now, I'm going to work with screen. I'm going to get my brush, bring it down, bring the size down, and I'm just going to go over these areas that I've done my rim lighting on. So I don't want to take too long. And it can be fairly rough because it's quite a glowy sort of look. And this should, in theory, make him look like he's kind of in the flames. I really, really like the rim lighting. Now the key with rim lighting is less is more, um, as with many things, simply because if you end up doing it all over the place, it doesn't make it pop, it just makes it look a bit silly. Whereas if you put it on surfaces, like on this arm here, it would be tempting to do it around all the poppy outy edges, but you really just want to do the places that are directly facing the light. So I'm just going to fix up a bit of the rim lighting here. Yeah, and, uh, and then you really get an effective sort of look. So I'm going to zoom out, get a bigger brush, and I'm going to be fairly liberal on the underside of the bat. Um, I changed my mind, I've added it to a clipping mask because I was worrying too much about going over the line so I'd rather just not worry about that. It's quite cool with clipping masks you can just decide to add it instead of fretting too much. So it's a fairly quick sort of process. It's sort of working, I'm not a huge fan of it yet. But often images go through this sort of yucky phase, so it's it's not in one of them, but you get used to working in a place that you're not happy with to get somewhere you are happy with. Okay. So I think that's roughly what I want. I'm going to bring down the opacity. I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to go to, I think it was vivid light. There we go. So you can see that really just adds a burn effect. And I don't want to overdo it too much. Let's see what it looks like away from the clipping mask. Yeah, that's good. All right, so I'm really happy with that. I don't want to do too much more with that because I'm really, really, really happy with it. And now I'm just going to mess with the background and I will have finished this promo piece. So let's just compare for the fun of it, this to our original. So let's keep our background. I'll hide the flames. So you can just compare the raw. So this is our current image. And then this is what we started off with. So you can see, bam, how instantly that is just so much better. Okay. Oopsie. Okay. So I've got my image ready to go. And what I'm going to be doing is messing with the background now. And I'm going to be, because I want the background minimal, because the focus is 
this character and, and that image, I'm going to use a website which you should know about. And if you don't, I'll tell you about it now. It's called cgtextures.com. I highly recommend signing up to it. It's free. You can pay to be a member and have higher image limits, but I'm not worrying about that now. I'm going to look up flame and I want to look up some images I can use. Now, this is just such a good resource. Oh, fine. Okay, so now I'm finding a few of the flames that work for me. What do I like? This works pretty well. So I download the large image. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing. I find this image, I click and drag it into here, not in a clipping mask, oops. Was my mistake it should be on the background so i'll do that again there we go okay so this is my flames picture so i'm going to go through my overlays until i get to where are we bingo screen and then i can reshape this to fit the look i want so i can rotate it it a bit okay so I'm gonna bring the opacity of the background flames down just a little bit and I'm gonna just keep messing with a few of these flame pictures because these are gonna make it look really cool so let's try I'm just downloading a few of these. It's on the other screen, so nothing is changing on the screen you're watching, unfortunately. Okay, so here's one of them. Change it to screen. And mess around to make it work. See, the tricky thing is because flames are organic, you want it to work physically with the scene that you're depicting which, which can be tricky screen Flip horizontal okay so I'm pretty happy with this and I'm gonna just do one more and I'm gonna put one on the top. So I'll download one more flame image. And when that's done, it'll take a few seconds. Don't mean to. So this is why I speed up a lot of the process because otherwise I will end up boring the crap out of you. So what have we got? 19 to 18, 11 is the one I haven't used yet. Okay, so I'm going to add a new folder on top of all this called FX. And I'm going to drag that flames I just put in there into my FX folder. Oops, no, that's not the one I want. This is the one I want. FX, there we go. Screen and... This one will be overlaid on top. Okay. Okay, so now with the background flames, I'm going to bring these down a bit. Bring this top one down a bit. Because the, the feature of this all is the image of the um, the characters themselves. So I want to make sure that they look clear, clear enough to see what they look like. 
Okay. So I think I'm in a pretty good place with this so far. Pretty happy with how this is looking at the moment. I'm gonna make sure that this is accentuated enough. Okay. With that done, the next thing I'm going to do is start adding a few particles and then the last thing I'll do is blur a little bit just for some motion. So in my effects folder, I'm going to add a few lines like this. And this is all improvised, so this may work, this very well may not work. And it doesn't have to look very pretty. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to fill this in with a very light yellow. Go through my blend modes until I find something that pops out a little bit. Overlay works well. Go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and really just blur the crap out of it. There we go. Bring down the opacity slightly. And so we've just kind of added a, a little bit of interest to the image. I'll do that again on a new layer. So just a few, uh, this time I'll use a brush and make it quite visible like this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just blur it a lot. Go through to find an overlay that I like. I don't want to use overlay again. What do I want to use? Let's try screen. I'll use screen, bring the opacity down quite a lot. Okay, so I quite like this so far. I think the flames are a bit distracting, so I'm going to bring the background flames down. I'm going to bring the foreground flames down. Because while I do want this to look a certain way, I also want to make sure that the feature remains to be the promotional part, which is the characters themselves. So too much is not okay. Bring down my background flame color. Okay, so it's really about finding balance, which is a really, really important part of the process. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. The next thing I'm gonna do is get some embers in there. So in the effects folder, I'm going to select my brush, select white, and make the size, let's say five pixels at full hardness. And I'm gonna just do this. Do some random dots all over the place. Then I'm going to go into my effects and add a glow, add a glow. Really light, strong yellow. to add this throughout the image, more clusters. Whenever you do things like this, you have overlays of like sparks or embers, the trick is not to be so evenly spaced apart. So for example, uh, in this area, there's a few more than in other areas. You want it to look organic like fire clumps in areas, some areas will be more empty than others, but some have a lot bunch up under the wing because the motion has made it really kick up. So 
same thing here and have it go back fly back here okay so now that I've got that where I'm happy with it I want to try filter blur motion blur and I'm gonna add a motion on an angle something like this oh, no I won't do that I'm gonna duplicate the layer first then I will right click on it Oops. and go, where am I? Oops, that won't work. I'll merge that with a blank layer. Merge layers, there we go. Okay, so then it hasn't got the effects because it was going weird with the blur. I add my motion blur, like this, which I'm pretty happy with. Okay, and now I'm just going to move it so that it's fitting. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur, very slight Gaussian blur. Okay, so I've almost got this to a place where I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to select my whole bat layer, right click and duplicate layers, hit OK and then merge layers, bam. I'm going to take these ones that are duplicated, put them behind the background, back where I have all my other backups of the bat, and hide them so that I only have one layer and it's this, this bat. And with that, I'm going to select with the lasso the bat like this copy and paste and paste it put him directly on top of himself like this and then I'm going to do the same blur Gaussian so not Gaussian I want a motion blur like that and I'm going to bring down the opacity Quite a lot. And I'm going to do the same thing all over again, but I'm just going to select this back part of the bat. Like this, copy, paste, put that on top and filter, blur, motion blur. Like this, hit OK, and bring down the opacity again. So you can see if I hide those two layers, it's completely still. When I put them back in there, we've got a bit of motion. Now it's got to be subtle. And now the last part of doing this image is balancing. So I'm going to go through the layers and make sure that the character, the bat and the mount and all the items and all that, are the prominent feature. So I'm going to go on my background layer and add, oops, add a gradient with a really dark orange, rich orange, like this. And then we'll find an overlay that softens it a bit. much. I just want to add a little bit. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. How about I take my flames in the front effects layer, merge them, and oops, that didn't work. Sorry, I'll rasterize them and then I'll add a blur. So filter, blur, motion, blur. See what that looks like. Do it to both. Filter, blur, motion, blur. So that the flames have a bit of motion. Okay, pretty happy with that. I think these embers are a bit strong. I'm going to bring them down. 
bring the blurred one down. Nearly got it to a place where I'm completely satisfied with it. I'm going to just duplicate this embers layer. Except I'm going to select it all and delete it and bring the opacity up. And I'm just going to have a few embers that actually do stand out. So there's a lot that are kind of hidden. But I want to make sure that there's some in the forefront of it all. Pretty happy with that. I'll bring the background ones down a little bit more. And the very last thing I do with my image is select everything that's part of my final image from effects to backgrounds, right click, duplicate layers, hit OK, then right click, merge layers. I'm going to hide those layers under the, actually, no, I won't hide it. I'm duplicating this. I'll call this first, I'll call it final. I'll duplicate it. And I'm going to do my final dodging and burning. So I get my whoops, which what burn tool. Just go around the edge like this. Darken the edges. Because I want it to really frame the image. And I'll select my dodge tool. Just bring out the middle parts only slightly because it's already so glowy. And you can see how quite subtly and effectively brings it out, frames the image a little bit more. I'm going to add one more layer on top to whoops, have a bit of that, um, whoops, bit of the black edging. Find an overlay that brings out the color a bit. Overlay works well. Okay, so I am happy with the final result. I really hope that you get something out of this tutorial. It's been a really long sort of process, but we got there in the end and I am very happy with the final image. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on Newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.